In this video, I'll show you how to make a simple but elegant degree-based recoil system that you can use in 2D and 3D. I'll explain it through the video, but you can skip ahead to the end if you want the code. Let's get started. Okay, so for this demo, I've made this little game here. It's just a little pixel shooter, and you can see that I move the cursor around and the guy moves and shoots. But you'll notice that if I hold down the shoot button, all of the bullets are going directly through the middle of the cursor. There's no recoil system at all. They just go directly in the middle of the cursor. And so what we wanna do in this video is add a little bit of recoil for a top-down game. This will be in 2D, but you can very easily do this in 3D too, and I'll show you how to adapt that code. But we'll just make it so that there's a little bit of recoil, so it'll bounce a little bit above and below the middle of the cursor and make it a little bit harder to aim over extended periods of shooting. Okay, so let's turn to a drawing here, which I apologize, it is not very good, but just as an example. So here we have our gun, right? And here is our mouse position. Right now we're shooting bullets in a straight line from the muzzle of our gun to our mouse position like so. What we want to do to add recoil though is to determine a set amount of degrees either above or below this line that our bullets can start to drift as fire is sustained. I like to think of it as a total amount of degrees above and below. So if we want it to drift possibly 5 degrees up or 5 degrees below, the total spread of our gun is 10 degrees. And so we're gonna be using the number of 10 in our own game and then split it in half so it can go five above or five below, just like you see here. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that this, this degree amount is rotated correctly. So if your gun is facing this way, the spread now becomes this angle right here. So anyway, just a little bit of an explanation visually of what we're trying to do. Let's turn back to Godot and start implementing this. So first, let me just walk you through a little bit of my gun code here because everyone's gonna have a little bit different of a project, you'll have to adapt this, but the code we're gonna write is all gonna go in your gun script or wherever you are actually shooting a bullet. For me, that's my gun script, gun.gd here. And so you'll notice that whenever the shoot function is called, this is whenever the player is holding down the mouse or hits the mouse, um, it runs in a, a, a physics process function. So whenever shoot is called, First, it's gonna make sure that the gun cooldown is stopped so that the gun can actually fire. And then it's gonna get the direction to the mouse, which I'm doing by saying get global mouse position minus the muzzle where the bullet spawns. So in my gun script, you'll see I've got a muzzle right here. This is just where the bullet spawns. So it's getting the direction, basically, the, vector, the normalized vector from the muzzle to where the mouse is. And so that's how we're getting the direction we're shooting, but there's no recoil, it's just a straight line to the mouse. And then I've got a, a auto load signal down here that fires the bullet. I pass in where the bullet should be spawned, the muzzle's position, and then the direction the bullet should go, which is this direction of mouse. So just like we said in that video, let's first add our max recoil. And remember, this is gonna be in degrees. So I'm gonna come up to the top of my gun script here, you do this wherever makes sense for you. I'm gonna say export variable, or I'm sorry, export float variable max recoil. And I'm gonna default this to 10, 10.0, because it's gonna be a float. And again, you can change this to be whatever you want. I'm doing an export so that I can edit these for each gun from the editor, but do it however you'd like. And I'll add a variable below called variable current recoil. And I'm gonna set this equal to 0, 0.0. The reason current recoil is not exported is because this isn't actually gonna be editable by the developer or the user. It's gonna be an internal variable used to track from zero to max recoil, what the current recoil at a given time is. Okay, so now that we have some recoil, or we have a max recoil, let's actually add some recoil to our gun. So what I'm gonna do is basically whenever our gun shoots, whenever our shoot function is called and we actually fire, whatever if statements need to get checked are passed, whenever we actually fire the gun, I'm gonna add a bit of recoil. So in order to do that, I'm gonna say current recoil, and I'm going to just say equals, and I'm going to use Godot's built-in clamp function to make sure that our current recoil never surpasses our max recoil, but also never drops below zero. So I'll say current recoil plus, and then here's where you can adjust as needed and add your own numbers. We're going to start by saying max recoil times 0.1. So we're basically dividing our max recoil over 10. 
And what this basically means is that it's gonna take 10 calls of our shoot function or 10 bullets that are fired for our gun to be up to max recoil because it's gonna start at zero. And because our max recoil is 10, in this case, the actual number, this, this is gonna come out to be one. So every time we shoot, we're gonna add one to our current recoil all the way up to 10. And what that means is that it'll be about 10 bullets for our gun to be at max recoil. And so if you take an average automatic weapon that maybe has like 30 bullets in it, that means that if you're just holding down the whole entire clip, you're gonna be at full recoil one third of the way in, which I think is pretty fair. It, it's, it's a pretty, I'd say that's a pretty common number for a lot of shooters. So we'll just do that to start. So whenever we shoot, we're gonna add recoil. We can actually extract our little max recoil thing here, and I'm just gonna create a new variable that's gonna be called variable recoil increment. And this is just gonna be set to max recoil times 0.1. So what this means is that whenever you have a gun that has more or less recoil, this will increase the current recoil relative to it. So it'll the increase of recoil will be proportional to how much recoil overall the gun should have. And you can tweak this formula maybe for things like a semi-automatic weapon, which are gonna shoot less, you need to have more recoil. Um, you can make that tweak in your own game, but this will be good enough for us for now. So I'm gonna add recoil increment here. So we're clamping our current recoil plus our recoil increment to a minimum value of 0.0, .0 which won't really matter here, but what will matter is clamping it at the top to max recoil. So again, here we're just adding recoil every time we shoot until we get to our max recoil. Okay, so we are adding recoil to our current recoil, but now we actually need to apply that recoil to the direction that the mouse is going. So you can see up here, like I said earlier, I'm getting the normalized vector, the normalized direction from our gun to the mouse. And what I wanna do is actually rotate that direction by the angle or by a certain amount of degrees based on our current recoil. Thankfully, Godot has a lot of helpful built-in functions for rotating and manipulating vectors, so it's really easy to do. But the first thing that we need to do is get our recoil amount. So I'm gonna create a new variable. I'll call it variable recoil degree amount. And I'm gonna set this to be current recoil times 0.5 or divided by two. And the reason for this is because remember that we said our max recoil is the total spread above and below. Well, we'll divide our current recoil in half so that our current recoil, which is the total degree spread, will only be half of that up or below. So if it's 10, it'll be five above or five below, and we'll get a random amount of degrees within that range. So this is gonna be, based on our current recoil, the max amount of variance from the middle that our bullets can go. Now we need to actually get a random number along that range. So what we'll do is say variable recoil, actually let's let's change this line above from degree max. So this is the maximum amount of degrees and then recoil degree actual. And so this is gonna be the actual amount of degrees that we are changing. And so what we are gonna do is say random range and we're just gonna go from negative recoil degree max to positive recoil degree max. So if our current recoil is five, then our recoil degree max is gonna be 2.5. So this is gonna give us a random float number between negative 2.5 and positive 2.5. So we might get a lot of numbers that are around zero. So as our recoil goes up, it might not seem like it at first, but that's all kind of part of the randomization and making it really feel like the gun you know, kicks that you can't, it's, it's not something that you can determine for sure. And it'll actually feel pretty good. Now, the other thing we need to do here is we've been dealing with degrees this whole time, which is totally fine. But when we actually go to rotate a vector, we need to be dealing with radians. So I'm actually gonna change our variable name here from recoil degree actual to recoil radians actual. And so what this random range is gonna return is a degree amount between our within our recoil range. But I actually need to convert these degrees to radians. And thankfully, Godot has a very helpful function to do that called degree to rad or deg to rad. So we'll just call that and wrap our random range call within that. And so this is gonna return the degrees that we just got as radians. And now we'll actually have the amount of radians we need to rotate our vector by right here in our recoil radians actual 
variable. And notice I'm doing all of this before we adjust our current recoil. I think that's probably a better way to do it so that every time we shoot, it affects the recoil of our next shot. So we determine the recoil adjustment for our aim before we actually apply the recoil for our current shot. Okay, so we have our radians, now we just need to rotate them. And in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is create another variable and I'm gonna say variable actual bullet direction. And I'm gonna set this equal to dir to mouse. So this is our direction that we are shooting. It's our direction to our mouse. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna call rotated, which again, this is the helpful built-in Godot function to rotate a vector. So I'm gonna rotate our vector to, and you'll see there's a phi parameter there. And this is just the angle that we give in. It's an angle in radians. So I can just pass in recoil radians actual. And now we're gonna have an actual bullet direction, which is just our unit vector rotated a certain amount. And because it's a unit vector, whatever we get from rotating it will also be a unit vector. And now we can use our actual bullet direction to pass into whatever part of your code is actually telling the bullet which way to go. For me, it's this global signal that I'm emitting right here, this bullet fired. So I need to replace our dir to mouse here with our actual bullet direction. So I'll do that now, actual bullet direction. Okay, so we have all the code that we need right now to be not only be adding recoil as our gun fires, but to actually apply that recoil to our shooting vector. The only thing we're not doing is bringing that recoil back down when the gun isn't shooting, but we'll get to that in a second. First, let's test this out in action. So now if I hold down the shoot button, you'll see that the bullets are actually not going right through the middle. There's a little bit of recoil. They're going a little bit above and a little bit below, but all of a sudden, as we hold down fire, our gun has recoil. It's not shooting as straight as it did before. So our recoil system is working. And 10 degrees, I think, for most rapid fire guns is a really nice amount to have a recoil that is controllable at near ranges, but you start to feel a little bit longer. So this is really nice. It's really easy to get our recoil going. And we'll just add a few lines of code now to bring it back down when the player isn't shooting. So in order to bring our recoil back down, what I'm gonna do is create a new function, and this will just be a physics process. Your shooting code might already be hooked into this function, but mine is not. So I'll add a physics process function here, and what I'm gonna do is say if press attack. And so this is, in my game, this is the name for the input event for shooting. It's just called attack. It's the left mouse button or hitting the right trigger on a controller. You can do change this for whatever it is in your game, but basically it's saying, hey, is the player actively firing right now? And if the player actively is firing right now, then we don't want to bring the recoil down. We don't want to have to compete between the recoil going up and then the recoil going down because it, it messes with your actual calculations. I found that it's much better to just not even try to balance the two out when you're actively firing and instead wait to actually bring your recoil back down to zero when the player isn't firing. So we're going to make sure if input is action pressed when this is not true. So if not input is action pressed attack, then what we're going to do is same thing that we did below here with our current recoil where we clamped it, except this time we're going to do current recoil equals clamp and again current recoil. So here I want the recoil to go back down to zero faster than it goes up while the player is shooting. Normally that would mean I would move it down by a higher increment than we move it up, but because we're calling this in physics process, which is almost inevitably going to occur or is going to get called faster than our shoot function, I think I should just be able to use the same recoil increment here. So I'm gonna copy our recoil increment down below, which is just max recoil times 0.1. And I'm going to say current recoil minus recoil increment. I'm gonna make a floor for this at 0.0 .0 because our recoil shouldn't be below zero. And our max will also be max recoil. Again, not that it really matters there, but just to put it there to be consistent. And so now every physics step, we are gonna drop our recoil back down by the same increment we brought it up. But physics process will be called much quicker, therefore it should go down faster. And what I'm gonna do so that we can see this is print out our recoil as it goes down, every physics process. And I'm gonna make sure it's not in our if statement here so that we can see it every frame. And this will give us just a little bit of help so that we can see our recoil as it goes. Okay, so you can see, I hope you can see at least in our output below our current recoil, it's just zero. And as soon as I start firing, it goes up. So if I start firing, it's up to 10 already, just like that. So it goes up to our max recoil and then it drops down to zero really, really, really quickly. 
But if you watch the bullets, you'll see that the recoil goes up and they're spreading and they're going out of the cursor a little bit. Then I stop and then when I start again, they're in a straight line. So our recoil is successfully going up and then going back down really, really nicely. I think what I wanna do is adjust the quickness by which our bullets go up and down a little bit because you can see as soon as I let off the trigger basically, we're already back at zero recoil. I think that's a bit too fast. I want there to be at least a tiny bit of recovery time, but you can adjust these numbers as we go in your own game. So for me, what I'm gonna do is change our recoil down from 0.1 to 0.05. So it's about half as quick, but it'll still be quick. And if I run this now, we should see that when I let off the trigger, it drops very quickly, but slightly less quick. And I think that is good. So there we go. We've built a successful recoil system that was really easy and is also easy to tweak and customize in your own game. Now we did this for 2D, but I've also done this in 3D before. As long as it's a top-down game, it works totally fine. And I'll show you the code that you need to do that. In fact, here's a demo I made in 3D using the exact same recoil system. And you'll see the bullets, as they get to the end of their cycle, start to spread out by that same amount that we saw in 2D. So I'll show you the code to modify this system to work in 3D as well. So in conclusion, here is all the code we added to make our recoil system work. We added an export variable for max recoil that you can change from the editor, and we added a current recoil variable to keep track of what the current recoil of a gun is. In our physics process, we added some code that will bring our recoil back down to zero whenever our player is not attacking. And then within our shoot function, or for your game, whatever it is that shoots bullets, we added a recoil amount, which is based on the current recoil divided in half. And then we converted that recoil amount, which is a degree, to some random degree amount within that range of possible recoil and converted that degree number to radians. We then rotated our direction that our bullet is firing. For me, it's the mouse, but you can use this for whatever direction your bullet's firing. You just rotate that vector by this recoil radian offset. And then we just fired our bullet using whatever position your bullet should spawn at and this new actual bullet direction. Now I promised I'd show you how to do this in 3D and all of this code is exactly the same, but instead of doing actual bullet direction on line 17 where you're rotating the direction to the mouse, you would just rotate whatever your forward direction is for your bullet, whatever direction you're, fit, you're shooting, Usually you'll probably do that by finding the global transform of where your bullet is spawning and the direction it's facing. That's at least the easiest way to do it. But whatever you're doing, you wanna get the current basis, the current rotation of your bullet, and then rotate it around the up axis by that same amount of degrees. Basises in 3D have the same rotated function that vector 2D and 3Ds have. So you can take advantage of that, and in 3D, all you have to do is rotate a basis by the same degree amount. All the other code is the same, it's just this line 17. It's just what you're rotating. Use the basis instead of a vector 2D. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I hope you found this video helpful and you're able to make your own recoil system in your own game. If you did find it helpful, a like and subscribe to support the channel are much appreciated. We'd love to have you in our Discord server, the link to that is in the description below. And if you did find my work helpful, donating a coffee on Buy Me A Coffee helps me continue to make great tutorials. Thanks so much for watching, see you in the next video.